Why should one invest in the arts? Why should one invest in music? It's how we experience things. It's how we learn. It's how we teach our kids. It's how we experience trauma during the struggle. And that's what music does. It's the soundtrack to our lives. If my dad was alive right now, what would I be saying to him? And this music, every time I play it, it's like me talking to him. Maybe talking to him in the spiritual realm. He was, he was sent a parcel bomb, a tape bomb. Yeah, you know, I mean, it messes up. I mean, as a four-year-old child, seeing your, your dad li lying there, I mean, blown to pieces, I mean, it's, it was very traumatic. So it, it's good to talk about it and actually engage with that kind of thing and actually understand the history of, of, of black pain, the history of black suffering. And that's how you get this music, jazz music. It's a triumph of the soul. So for me, my attraction to jazz music was that, was, was the triumph of that soul. He's one of the new voices that's talking to his past his father's past, his family's past, his community's past, and reflecting as to where the youth are now. Why the trumpet? Why did you choose the trumpet? The trumpet actually chose me. The, the, the music school that I was attending was a bit under-resourced in terms of instruments. What instrument do you have? I'll just take anything, you know, for now. He says, oh, you know, there's a trumpet in my boot. Uh, go fetch it. The rest is history. My first real encounter with them uh, was in 2005, when I was doing my first year at WITS. And I got the sum of, I think, 9,000, which covered the tuition. Um, the philosophy behind, behind the foundation is that if you fund students, if you fund bursaries, or you fund programs that invest in artists, composers, musicians, technicians, all of those, they contribute towards the rights business. Um, rights and royalties is only at the top of the value chain when the product's already developed. So if you're picking fruits from the top of the tree, from the top of the value chain, it's your responsibility to invest in the roots. The roots are education, the roots is development. In a society such as ours, or in a world such as ours, where what is deemed necessary, what is deemed beautiful, what is deemed glamorous, is often stuff that is not very wholesome, uh, but it's plentiful, it's everywhere. And it's almost like there's, a, there's a, a flood of things that have no depth, but, uh, but have a lot of pull. The most important thing is finding people who want to support art, who want to become part of that, and who are prepared to put some money towards it, you know? I mean, the, the plan was to obviously further my studies. With that first money, I knew that I didn't have a horn, a really good horn, and I was using my teacher's horn. So I decided to buy my teacher's horn and use that. So that was the first trumpet that I ever owned. It's important in any industry to establish outliers. One of the challenges that one experiences with the arts and music is a lack of an understanding, especially with government, the lack of an understanding of the trajectory of the arts. We're quite clear about that. You invest at the lower levels, you follow these careers, and you touch them in different ways. And you touch them in the bigger way when they become composers, even after death. We've got original handwritten manuscripts by artists going back to the 1920s that's been preserved. Some remade a lot of things quite simpler, quite easy, more accessible, like its archives. You don't pay a lot of amount to like uh, actually perform it. One of the major challenges you have in a changing music scene is that live music is the bread and butter. So Norwegians approached us and said, what do we do about live music? Consistence is a live music development program um, that came about as part of a process of looking at what the live music scene looks like and kind of really trying to develop that part of, of, of music. Just to know that someone is listening, someone is taking you seriously, someone is getting you started, it's like when someone is holding you by the hand and say, I'm going to walk with you, you know? 
But getting involved in live, we needed something catalytic. A little bit of subsidy, a little bit of investment. Plant it there and watch it grow. The nuts and bolts of it are that we receive a grant that allows us to underwrite our music program. We are a partnership where those with the resources and who want to make impact um, can create very life-affirming relationships with creative people who do the work. The project is important to me on the one hand, generating revenue for artists, stability for venues and for promoters. But it's most important to me because it's a cultural policy model, not in a theoretical sense. It builds a model that influences music, influences the arts, and takes culture to people. I mean, there is a comfort for me that, to know that, okay, it's supported by concert I say it means that definitely I'll be paid uh, a certain type of amount and I know what to expect. So having the institutional framework to enable people like him to work is what actually makes us most optimistic about music, about jazz in, in this country. Our vision is much more to be uh, consistently the place where the best jazz live can be, can be uh, accessible. Well, you know, it's, it's great that as a venue, we do get uh, that, uh, that extra money. We've made a difference to many venues, many artists, many promoters. We can take that model to the state and say, you've not spent a cent on this. We've used international donor funds to help your arts, help us do it better. Where the live music scene is today wouldn't be quite where it is at the moment if it hadn't been for the support and initiatives of something like Concert SA. There was, there's just been a revolution, if you will, and Concert SA came at the right time as that. Promoters put on certain events for us as well, and they primarily work with the school circuit, which is really taking live music performances to schools. It's really beautiful, and when you see pictures at these schools where a jazz band is performing for young kids who are not necessarily into jazz, but just to see the, the joy in their faces, it's such a, it's a beautiful thing. We call it our little joy drug, <laughs> you know, when you're having a bad day. A school gig is something you want to see. When I go to these concerts, I look at these kids, and I see the light bulbs going off, because you see how someone gets ignited by great live performance. It's great. It's actually, then I feel like a rock star. It's, it's a great gig. So getting into that circuit, obviously, it sustains our music. I think because those, that's the audience of tomorrow. You know that you're lighting the fires for a future audience, for a future musician, and perhaps for some a future composer. I'm, a, I'm fortunate enough that I'm starting to live off my music, whether I compose or, or I arrange. I'm, trying to, to make it work for myself. He's grown so much out of his being proactive, saying, I'm going to do this, I'm doing it, and I'm doing it, you know? Yeah, kind of like I'm entrepreneuring. Being an independent artist, not signed to any label, he's just doing it out of his pocket, out of the gigs that he does, out of, you know, grants from um, Concerts as a Summer Foundation. So, you know, what can you say? You say the class is half empty, I say it's half full. We've had workshops around marketing for musicians and promoters and that kind of thing, knowing your rights as a musician. I think one of the biggest issues for musicians in South Africa is organisation. Um, not just depending on, on venues for, for work, but just making us work for ourselves. It's, it's really practical, necessary information for, people, for, for musicians and, and other practitioners to, to jack themselves up. Every song that gets registered... I mean, I would have learnt it uh, the, the very hard way. It would have taken me longer. I've always taken full advantage of that. Whenever something else and that I'm interested in it avails itself, then I obviously go for it. One of our biggest sort of activities is the Music Mobility Fund. Musicians apply um, to do a tour. It gives the musicians the power to organize their own tour, figure out how that's going to work for them. So pack your bags, we'll travel. That's what we're trying to encourage. And it's worked. There's been hundreds of artists that are now traveling. I applied to go to Zimbabwe, Mozambique, and Swaziland. So it was a pretty good deal. It was a bang for their buck. I got funding for less than 50,000. I got moving, and I got a lot done within 14 days. 
So to get something like this is very important, you know, so that uh, people can take their music out there. It's, it's the way that is titled as well, mobility. It kind of gives you that grease for your wheels. Traveling is just in itself, just such an important asset to, to artists. I think the, the Swaziland gig was a highlight out of all of them. I mean, that's where we got the most exposure and people saw us for the first time there. All the way from South Africa, Mzansi. I mean, that's how I grow as a musician. And that's how I grow, I mean, that's how I shape and that's how I mold my sound. I think Mandla is going to be one of those compositional voices, one of those performers whose trajectory can last a long time and shape and influence other players. I want to leave a legacy. Um, part of actually forming the Mandla Freedom Ensemble it would be doing that, working at it and actually having it as a, as a vehicle for, for other composers, for other musicians to tell their stories as well. So there's a number of these young cats who's starting to grow, who's starting to influence the scene. Mandla, at his younger age, is already starting to do that. And that's why we're supporting someone like him through the projects that we do. I want to be a greater, a better musician. I want to be a better person, better son, better father, better human being, not just a great musician. So my legacy uh, would be one of, of a person who, who's actually helped shape the South African story.